in this vigil prayer. Mighty God, may you be in this vigil with us. May your angels surround us, Holy Father. May you encamp around us and among us. Father, manifest your power in an extraordinary way tonight. In the name of Jesus, equip us with your power. Equip us with your grace. Father, there is nothing that we can do on our own without your help. Father, only by your help shall we move forward tonight. We are standing on Psalm 1 to the 4 verse 8. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, you are our help. Only you will help us, Lord. Father, through your presence and by your presence, we shall experience your help tonight. Father, manifest your power in a special way. Bless us in a special way tonight. Take care of every prayer that we made in this session, Lord. Let them carry heavy-duty anointing, heavy-duty deliverance, heavy-duty revelations in the name of Jesus. And your word says in Isaiah 48, verse 11, My glory I will not give to another. Therefore, this night, the devil will not take your glory. Sickness will not take your glory. Take your, will not take your glory. Father, situations we are, we are passing through, they shall not take your glory. Father, you shall make a name for yourself tonight. That is what we know. And that is what we are convinced about. And that's what we know you are going to do tonight. Father, Lord, we have returned to you fully. And the word says in Isaiah 30, verse 15, in returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall you find strength. Father, O oh Lord, we cannot hide. Therefore, Father, let Isaiah 30, verse 15 be fulfilled tonight. Bless our bloodline. Bless our lineage. Bless our heart. Bless the message of this night. Bless the proclamations and declarations and prophecies of this night. Father, bless them all in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Father, we know that whatever plan you have for us across the past, for nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you from blessing your children. Your word says in Mark 13, verse 31, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but your very word will never pass away. So your word concerning us, your promises concerning us, they shall not pass away because you are God whose words will come to pass, no matter the powers that have risen against your children. And so, Father, we are thanking you with your promises in Isaiah 49, verse 16, that says, See, I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. Surely, you have engraved us in the palms of your hands. You love us so much, and your love is here with us, and we are here to give you glory in the name of Jesus. At the early hours of this prayer, we are standing on Isaiah 14, verse 5, to decree that the, the enemy's rod is broken. The, the Bible says in Isaiah 14, verse 5, that the, the Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. So shall it be tonight that as we pray, the powers of darkness are broken, their enterprise are broken, their territories, their temples, their altars, they are broken tonight. They shall not survive this prayer. We are decreeing there shall be terrible casualties in the kingdom of darkness tonight, as the angels of God are here already in the name of Jesus. The angels of God are here already, and they are ready for battle. And so shall it be tonight that as the heavens have gathered on our behalf to fight for us, so we know that the rod of the wicked shall be broken in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, in Psalm 1, 2, 5, 3, that the rod of the wicked will not remain in the house of the righteous. So shall it be tonight that the rod of sickness shall not remain in my life. It shall not remain in my destiny. Blessed be your name, Lord. Father, we appreciate you mightily because through, through this prayer tonight, there shall be a divine appointment for somebody in the name of Jesus. That through the prayers of this night, the ordinary people shall become extraordinary people in the name of Jesus. That through the prayers of this night, your people are going to ride in the higher places in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you because this is our night with you. This is our night that miracles are going to happen in a special way. That this fear shall be taken away. That shame shall be taken away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your shining light that is already shining over this prayer meeting in the name of Jesus. Thank you as you are going to guide us here, leading us into your presence, leading us into your glory. Father, we are just so grateful for what we are going to do tonight. Blessed be your name. We are praying for the gift of vision to manifest tonight in a external way. Let your people see what you have Package for them to see the spiritual realm. Any spirit that want to alter or corrupt visionary gifts, let such spirit be crippled tonight. 
Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Holy Spirit, take your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Let it be said tonight that the mountain shall fall in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, that tonight the pestilence is destroyed, that tonight the shame is crippled in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for you are going to trouble the troubler tonight. You are going to trouble those who have risen against your children in the name of Jesus. We shall not sink because you are with us. We shall not be destroyed because you are with us. And we know that through your name or the power of your name, we are complete in you. We are complete in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. We have come to do your will. Therefore, have your way. In Hebrews 10, verse 9, and the Bible says, I come to do your will, O God. He taketh away the, fe the first, that he may establish the second. Therefore, Father, you are the first. You are the second. You are everything. You are our life. Blessed be your name. May you establish us. Being the first which you are, may you establish us and to take the second position. In Jesus' super mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. My dear friends, I have the pleasure to welcome us into this midnight prayer meeting in which we are praying to heaven and Jesus is here with us. We have just finished the, the station of the cross and we have come to the day four of our prayer march and um, we are in the chapter two of our prayer guide our prayer guide is the invisible war volume two by brother wakwe chuku and um, we have seen that the tyrant the powers of darkness they are fully out to destroy the children of god and we also have seen that that the fight we are talking about is a fight without mercy the enemy wants to kill you don't forget john 10 10 the enemy comes to kill to destroy and to take away there's nothing good about the mission statements of the devil so he is fully out, armed to the teeth, to kill, to destroy the plan of God for you, to destroy what God wants you to be in life. Amen? So when such an enemy is armed, what are you going to do? to fight them because god wants us to fight them so what are we going to do what we're going to do is to take up weapons the weapons that god has given to us to fight the forces of darkness to fight the spiritual tyrants this is the theme of this the four and the, the five which i'll be having the message we're going to go in parts and god is going to lead us into weapons against the spiritual tyrants there's no way god will expect us to fight the tyrants without giving us weapons god has indeed equipped us with unending fully loaded weapon warehouse i tell you god has equipped the church to be a militant church a church that knows how to fight so i welcome you to this message in the name of jesus father as i have accepted your call to deliver this message in your name I pray that though they hear my voice, but let the power therein be a witness that it is not me that is really speaking, but you that is speaking. That they hear the echoes of you through the voice of man. 
it has been your will to choose a man like me, as unworthy as I am, to partake of this high calling of ministry. And all I'm asking you, Lord, may I never give my message. May I never share what I think. I crucify my flesh that it must not speak. I crucify my faculty that it must not speak. Let the power of above, the power of Jesus, prevail tonight and feed your people, Lord, so that the voice they will hear will be your own voice, Lord. Speaking through the voice of man. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I invite you to page 35 for a prayer manual. We fought against spiritual tyrants. I share the word of God with you, friends, in Christ, before we continue this message. And we are going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 4. And now I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition. And the Bible says, and I read, the weapons of our warfare are not a canal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My friends, we live at a time that we hear of war or wars. At any time we talk about war or we hear of war, it's all about fight with weapons. Every country on earth have a way of protecting their own territory. Similarly, God also has given us spiritual territories to protect, and he has equipped us with war equipment or war weapons. In a natural life, countries have their Weapon warehouse or warehouses. And there are countries with more weapons than the others. We hear of superpowers in our time. And it's nothing other than the level of technological advancements that such country exhibit, including military superpowers. And I know of no other country to use to exemplify this message of superpower than the United States of America. A country that God has blessed so much in terms of wealth and resources. At the same time, a country that have armed themselves with unthinkable level of armory. And uh, it is disturbing in our time that what we have in the weapon warehouses of many countries are capable of bringing an end of life. My dear friends in Christ, we are going to look at what I consider to be one of the deadliest wars in human history. And I'm going to focus on America. America had fought wars in different nations and have been known for victory over the years. They have always gone to intervene 
in countries that have been going through resources from other countries to go and help them to fight battles. America have gotten the name to be the police of the global nation. However, in spite of the wealth of military weapons in the land of America, it's time to surprise that there was a war that America cannot forget in their history. And that is what is considered to be one of America's deadliest wars in the history of the United States. Permit me today to tell you that that was the Vietnam War. During the Vietnam War, Americans took their highly sophisticated weapons to Vietnam. But they suffered a mind-blowing casualty from their enemies who hid on trees and inside the water using breathing apparatus. America had never fought a kind of war. Can you imagine a war that they came to the jungles of the Vietnam? They could not see their enemies that they came to fight, but all they were seeing were bullets, arrows, flying and hitting them. They turn left, they turn right, they can't see anybody. But the arrows are hitting targets. And look at Americans falling. The worst war you can ever fight is to fight a war you don't know the cause, where your enemy is hiding. You don't even know where to shoot. And that is a clear picture of spiritual war. Because of the fact that in a spiritual war, you don't see the enemies with official eyes. It provokes our mind to anchor on Jesus, whose eyes see in the spirit. And who knows the locations and the coordinates of the evil ones. My dear friends, the Vietnamese. We are hitting the Americans from their hiding places. The Americans could not even understand the strategy of the enemies that they came to fight against. The Americans we are dying in death numbers by minutes, by hours, as the Vietnamese prevailed against them. People of God, you see, the Vietnamese simply outwitted the Americans, although the Americans had highly sophisticated technological weapons. Eventually, the Americans abandoned the war and they went home. What a shame that the world's superpower went to war to fight a country that nobody knew would ever withstand them. And not only that they were able to withstand the Americans, but they defeated them, colossal defeats. Could you imagine how the superpower was going home with shame, crawling like millipedes? in shame, coming home with wounds. There are hospitals filled up with amputated soldiers, those who managed to escape. My people of God, any enemy that you do not know quite well is stronger than you. Any enemy that you do not know how he functions, you do not know how his strengths are, is stronger than you.
<laughs> she says, you may have advanced weapons of warfare like the Americans, but one of the lessons that the American Vietnam War teaches us is that we should properly investigate the strengths of our enemies. You are going to war without violating the strength of your enemy. It is like going on a project without investigating what will cost you. In the same way, if we Christians do not understand the kind of battle that we are in, hmm, then we would be rendered useless and defeated. Is it not true? Granted that God has given us the superior weapons of warfare. All right? He has given us the weapons that we need in order to win every battle, every spiritual battle confronting us daily. Bet! Bet! We are overcome by the enemies if we are outwitted by the enemies. Look at America again. They went to the war to fight the Vietnamese, a country without military strength that could cause concern. But the Vietnamese studied the strength of the America and found out their weakness. The Vietnamese also studied their own strengths and weaknesses. That they took advantage of their, their strengths and used their strengths to fight the Americans. In a spiritual war, it is all about outwitting the enemy. The devil wants to outwit you and using his power to fight you. Have you asked yourself why sometimes you are fighting somebody in, a, in the spirit? You are fighting a spirit. And the spirit is in a human form. Now, the spirit has seen that you are prevailing strongly against him or her or against it. Now, the spirit will turn into an animal. Then you start the fight with a human spirit, the spirit in a human form. It has turned into a lion. Now, you have begun to fight a lion. This is now something, a deadly spirit. This is not a killer spirit. Now you prevail. It turns into a snake, a viper. That does a bite can weaken you. And you continue to fight. And it turns into maybe a plate or a stone. Can even disappear. What is happening is that the enemies are trying to act with you. They are trying to outsmart you. But when you understand the spiritual warfare, you can seize or arrest the power of the enemy to transform or transmute. I'm going to define these terms as we go on this message. So, St. Paul, who is a warfare man, a man who is skilled in spiritual warfare, tells us in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, saying, and we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan. For we are not ignorant of his designs or devices. I want to repeat it again. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And the Bible says, And we do this so that 
we may not be, we may not be outwitted. By who? By the devil, by Satan. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So the message is clear. The enemy wants to out, out with you. He uses his powers, his weapons to skillfully and uh, plotting how to outwit you so that he will attack you. Look at what happened to Samson. He was outwitted. Well, Samson strong, sure. Could he kill the enemies in thousands? Yes. Yes, Delilah, without a whip, without machine, without even a knife, was able to be an instrument to get down something. The Philistines outwitted something using Delilah. But something was carrying heavy duty power. Yes, that is true. But the other was not carrying any machine gun to fight something. That is true. But the Philistines could not match something. We all know that now. That's true. How come the Philistines were able to conquer something who kills in tens of thousands with the bare hand? Without Using a weapon on something, they found out his weakness and they capitalized on his weakness and they were able to outwit him, taking advantage of his weakness. The Vietnamese outwitted America in that war by taking advantage of Americans' weakness. What is the weakness of the Americans? Americans have weakness in understanding war in the jungle. They don't, they don't know, they don't understand it. They have never fought war in the jungle. Fighting in the jungle requires a different military scale. The Vietnamese, they went into the jungle, hid in the mangroves. Can you imagine? In the mangrove, how do you run? How do you see where your enemies are hiding? I mean, this is what they call. God, goggle mangroves and see how they look like. Trees are everywhere. So you don't even see your enemy, because the enemy is seeing you. They are inside the water, they are inside in the mangrove, and they are wearing their breathing apparatus. We are in the eye goggles, looking up and seeing you, but not seeing them. And then all they need to do is to shoot as, at will. Shooting down American aircrafts, shooting down the things they came with, mess them up. They outwitted the Americans. The devil wants to study you, not to outwit you. Wisdom demands that we do not allow them to outwit us. How? By being in Christ. So that the wisdom you exercise will be the wisdom of Christ, which is superior to the devil's wisdom. You can't match the devil's wisdom. It is only Jesus Christ that can match his, his wisdom. So when we are in Christ, the power of Christ will now excel us. He deceived Adam and Eve. Look at the way he did it. I don't have time to go through that. But you will know how he, he did it. Deceived them. Convinced them to eat the forbidden fruit that God told them not to eat. Convinced them. Outwitted them. Read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You see that there's a pattern of outwitting God's people. The devil. How many people has the devil outwitted who married those that were not supposed to marry? Getting into a career they weren't supposed to get. 
Get you into a relationship you're not supposed to get into. Only to be defeated. Only to be destroyed at the end of the day. I was sharing, I was talking with a, a priest some time ago, uh, and he told me of when the, he was in the seminary, and he said that there, there, there were about nine or, or ten of them that were a very powerful prayer group. And he said that they were moving with the fire. They were always praying, fasting. In the night, they got up to pray. But he said that the leader of the group was something else, with the power of Holy Ghost. He said, well, okay, this man pray. And they were all thinking of how they were going to impact the lives of God's people when they become priests. He said that all of a sudden, this man came up one day to school and said, you know what? I'm not going to be a priest again. I want to join one lady in her, in her ministry. That the lady gave me a message that God did not call me to be a priest. These other prayer groups were worried. He said, no. But he made up his mind. Everything was done to change his mind. He couldn't. At the end, he left seminary. Joined that lady in her ministry. Guess what happened? Before that was happening, this man began to have a relation with the lady. And the scandal came up. Very heavy scandal. That messed him up. Messed his career up. Messed his anointing up. The enemy outwitted him. As we talk on enemy outwitting us for God willing, maybe even in the next an hour or two. But this is not going to be the focus of this prayer tonight. So I'm not going to talk much on this. But I emphasize this as God permits me so that we understand that the enemy is fully out to outwit us. And the Paul is telling us that we should not allow the enemy to outwit us. For we are not ignorant of his designs. The designs to do what? To outwit and to defeat. My friends, the situation is worse if we go to war. <laughs> But we don't know how to use the weapons of warfare. That is calamity. Eh? <laughs> how can somebody go to war and you carry weapons, but you don't know how to use the weapons? Is that person not foolish? You are going to war with machine gun, but you don't have to use the machine gun. We are disadvantaged when we have not effectively understood nor efficiently utilized God's spiritual weapons at our disposal to successfully fight the spiritual enemy of our lives. It is clear that we are called as a body of Christ to fight and defeat the devil and his parade of spiritual tyrants through these weapons given to us. Yet, not minding that God has equipped the church with weapons of warfare, Children of God. Many are not aware that they, they have weapons. Many are aware they have weapons, but they don't know how to use it. It does not make sense. If I buy a jet fighter and give to my small boy, Have I armed him? Yes. I gave him, you know, jet fighter. He could use it to kill enemies in thousands just by dropping a bomb. So I've given him every, what he needs to 
to be able to destroy his enemies. But what does this, this boy does not know how to fly the jet bomber? That is the picture of the calamity we face as Christians of this age. God has given us more than just bombers to bomb the enemies, to mess them up. Okay? But we don't know how to fly them. So we are sitting with our weapons. We are loaded, but unwise, unskilled, uneducated in how to use the equipment or weapon. It is a calamity of our time. This is the calamity of the church of the 21st century. Go to the church of the 1st century. They understand the power of Christ and they use the power of Christ to fight the force of darkness. They use the power of Christ to save themselves from calamities. Was it not their prayer that saved Peter? Was it not their prayers that turned the culture of their time upside down and people were repenting? Was it not their prayers that made them to withstand the persecution they were going through? Was it not the other day that a storm arose against Paul, against the, the, the ship that was carrying Paul in chains? That is because Paul was praying. The storm could not sink the ship. One man praying. Who understood that the storm was sent to sink him, to destroy him, to kill him, to terminate his ministry. And even when he escaped the storm, and he came into Acts 28, right there, as he now faced a very aggressive winter in the island of Malta. The winter was so heavy, as if to say, you escaped the, the river, this ocean. You escaped being killed there, you, getting drowned there. No, but you can't escape the cold. Paul set up fire to warm himself. And they, unknown to him, there was a snake in the, in the woods. And the snake beat him. As if to say, you have escaped the... The storm in the sea, you have escaped the cold river swimming up to the shore, you have escaped dying by cold. Now you can't escape the snake poison. But he escaped it. The poison could not kill him. I have a message for you, my friend. If we understand that this war is after our lives. We should, we should arm ourselves with the word of God. We should arm ourselves effectively and efficiently with the weapons of warfare to fight the enemy, lest he become a victim. One of the lessons, or um, let me say, one of the lessons that that a Christian ought to learn from American Vietnam War is that spiritual warfare requires a good offense. It also requires a good defense. It also requires a, an effective intelligence. Now, these terms are military terms. A good offense, you know how to fight. You don't allow the enemy to enter your territory first before you begin to fight. You withstand him. You res uh, let me put, use the word of James 4 verse 7. Resist him and we flee. You don't allow the to be sick first before you begin to pray. If you are retired and wait for when they, you become sick, when your children begin to misbehave, when your marriage begins to shake, that, that's when you wake up to begin to pray. What you are doing is defensive. Defensive. which is not bad that you are defending yourself. But we are required to have a good offense. That is, fight the enemy. Don't allow him to even fight your phone before you fight him. Fight him, that's offensive. Take offense on him. Fight him. 
Because if you don't fight him, he'll start to fight you. And he'll bring you to a point that you begin to defend yourself, and right? then maybe he will at mass at with you. God forbid. Okay? So we need, we need a good offense, meaning that you have to be praying all the time, just like we do this ministry. A good offense. You don't give the devil the opportunity to come and mess you up. A good offense. It also requires a good defense, that meaning that if eventually there's any way they come inside you, inside your territory, then you can know how to attack them. But it also requires effective intelligence. You see, when we talk about military, the intelligence we're talking about, the book is talking about here is not, it's not a faculty, it's not a mind intelligence, it's not that you know how to solve mathematics. It's not that you are too smart in the class. No, this is not what I'm talking about here. It's not a, a regular knowledge of things or wisdom of things. No. It is the, the understanding the skills of how to study your enemy. Intelligence is getting information about your enemy. That's intelligence. That's military intelligence. Okay, and taking proactive actions to stop him. <laughs> so effective intelligence is necessary in spiritual warfare. Just like an as it is in physical war. Effective intelligence is necessary not only to study the enemy and his operations very well, but also to make tactical and uh, you know strategic attacks and the defenses. All right? If you want to cause very serious casualties on, against your enemy, now I want to talk physically now, in the physical warfare, that is physical wars, your intelligence helps you to understand the enemy. Now, when you understand the enemy, you know his strength, you know his weaknesses. Now, by intelligence, you don't take advantage of his weaknesses, and then you attack him when he's weak and cause him terrible casualties. Now, so it is the spirit. Proper intelligence reduces the enemy to casualties. Also, proper intelligence reduces your own casualties. Like if you have a proper military intelligence, you know, during the war, bullets might hit some of your people, but because you are already prepared and uh, you have studied the, the strength of your enemies, the casualties on your side will be less. It was zero. So it is in the spiritual realm. You, you see, we are the children of God. And uh, we need to do everything in our, in our power to anchor on the divine intelligence, the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the power that is of the supreme intelligence. I'm talking about the supreme intelligence of the heavens. Okay? Now, When I was writing this book, The War, The Invisible War, and God led me into this subject. And it's just like a lot of, of my writings, I took time to study the to study military intelligence. I, I took time to to study it. A lot. Because this helps me to translate it into spiritual intelligence. Because when we understand how things play out in the physical, then that can help us understand how it is the spiritual. You see, just think of it this way. If a child is growing, the child will have to judge things, understand things better based on what the child is seeing. Until when the child, his mind matures, then he begins to 
talk of uh, talking parables. If you if you give a child a parable, he won't understand it. He has to grow. His mind has to grow at the same point before you're able to understand parables. Because parable requires deeper thinking. So the child will begin to learn of physical things. You know. But then when he begins to grow, he can begin to communicate with him in parables. Then as he continues to grow, he begins to understand the spiritual things, which is a deeper mystery. Then he begins to understand that what he sees that play out in the physical were actually things, events, decisions, judgments, designed, concluded upon in the spiritual realm. Then he comes to understand that the spiritual control the physical. Amen, man, amen. So, my friends, we are in a world that spiritual things control the affairs of men. I'm so obviously said that I paid great attention to how America captured the greatest terrorists in all ages. And I'm talking about the Osama bin Laden. We, we see the power of a good intelligence when in May 2011, the US Navy SEALs carried out an operation that killed the man called Osama bin Laden, the leader of the Al-Qaeda terrorist group. It marveled me the extent of military intelligence that was put in place to get Osama bin Laden. I carried out deep research on it, and I tell you, I was so impressed with the intelligence of this great nation, America. Because Osama bin Laden was, was almost like a mystery, if you are following up with the news that time. You don't even know where, where he was, where he was hiding, and yet you hear his voice, you will see his videos. You will see the orchestrated bombings. That was like the Americans going to fight the Vietnamese and they could not understand the war. Americans were bombing mountains and caves. <laughs> and yet, the man they were trying to get, couldn't, they couldn't even get him. After studying the intelligence that was put in place, that led to the capture and the killing of Osama bin Laden, I told myself, wow, how I wish that the church will learn how to put in place this kind of intelligence in the spiritual sense. My dear friends, in my book, what I did was just to capture a kind of a synopsis of the intelligence that was put in place to capture Osama bin Laden. In order to just draw a, a strong point to enter into my message, the CIA, that is the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States, and the several United States agencies worked together, carried out detailed intelligence studies and the surveillance that we are critical for the success of the oppression. During the intelligence studies, the Americans properly located where Osama bin Laden was living, located his security networks, and uh, discovered all his strengths and weaknesses. And of course, 
<laughs> we're able to find out military protocols that will help them to fly into where he was undetected. And they knew that Pakistan, that, that was where Osama bin Laden was before they caught him, that they also had their own military intelligence. The man they wanted to catch had his own military intelligence. But this game is a game of who will outwit the other. That's how it is in the spirit. I tell you the truth. <laughs> Woo! Jesus. So my friends, the America has to study the Pakistanis defense network. Now, the, the Pakistanis defense capabilities were known very well to the Americans. Since the Americans had helped the Pakistanis equip and train the Pakistanis. So they knew their strength. <laughs> because they supply some more equipment. Okay? Even when they were sure that this was the location of this man, and they were convinced, took radar studies, and the knew that this was where he was, convinced about it. They had other issues. They knew that the weather on that day that they were to attack would be a very foggy weather, and that would affect the operations. <laughs> hey! So they decided to move under the guide of the moonlight. Took care of everything that needed to be taken care of. Used military equipment that would be able to navigate the poor visibility of the, due to the foggy environment. And they also worried that by the time they start bombing and all that, or by the time they, they um, Helicopter bombing helicopters will be moving, military helicopters, that neighbors could notice that something was going on. And that could alert the intelligence of the Pakistanis that maybe an intruder had come into our country. They took those things into consideration. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. On the day of the operation taking note of everything that needed to be taken care of. They moved under the moonlight, studied the day that the moonlight in the night. And uh, the day by weather forecast that there was going to be little moonlight so that their presence would be unnoticed. Then they cut off electricity supply to the neighborhood where Osama bin Laden was. And neighbors didn't even know that something was going on in their, in their region. They thought it was uh, maybe something, maybe a transformer blew up or something like that. They didn't know something was happening in their territory. They studied to find out where their, their substation was or where their substations were so that they were able to blow up, stop transmission of electricity. They also cut off the uh, telephone communications so that nobody will call anybody. Cut off their network, their network completely paralyzed. And people didn't know that something was going on. They thought it was a, a, a problem that just came up that they, it will be fixed. <laughs> Hello! Friends and clients, there were one night goggles that were able to make them to see the night. I 
at the end, they were able to locate their targets and was able to get Osama bin Laden. You may see more details on this in the book. Why did they succeed in getting their target, their enemy? Intelligence, military intelligence. Intelligence failure is most likely to end up in serious casualties like the one that America fought the Vietnamese and they suffered terrible casualties because of lack of intelligence, lack of proper intelligence. <laughs> I pause at this point, my friends. I pause as I recall to mind casualties, countless Christians all over the world in ages who are simply wounded and defeated soldiers of Christ with broken legs, that is spiritual lameness, with broken hands, that is unprotected destinies, with the bleeding hearts, that is broken hearts, with the headless living, that is purposeless lives, because they could not make enough spiritual intelligence to attack the enemy. And so they were vulnerable to the attack of the enemy. For how long will this continue to take place? For how long will the church be ignorant or weak to attack the, the powers of darkness that have risen against the church? For how long will this continue? It is an unfortunate situation that the church has suffered many casualties and have lost many of her soldiers, soldiers of Christ. Many people of God have died before that time because they cannot fight the enemy with good defense, good offense, and effective intelligence. The reward is casualty, is death, is destruction, is being messed up. I am afraid that there are more spiritual disabilities among the Christians today than there are physical disabilities in the world. God does not want to see his soldiers being beaten. God does not want to see his children crawling like communities in shame. It hurts God to see that. God wants to see the church use the weapons of all surpassing power of Christ to wreck the kingdom of darkness, and pull them down, and destroy them. My dear friends, having you hear this message, God is inviting us to wake up to be people of prayer, to take up the weapons he has given to us to be people of warfare. Always remember 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. If you are fighting the enemy carnally, you are already defeated. But God tells us that our weapons are mighty through God in pulling down of satanic strongholds. What is the stronghold against your family? What is the stronghold against your life? What is the stronghold against your, your glory? Today, we are calling on the mighty power of Jesus, the power that destroys the satanic networks. Let him cripple and paralyze every satanic agenda against your life. We are releasing the blood of Jesus against satanic tyrants, against spiritual tyrants, against of darkness, again the spirit that wants to leave me disabled, again the spirit that wants to protect my destiny, again the spirit that wants to mess up my life and my family. Let them receive fire in the name of Jesus. Hail Jesus. I pray tonight, may God use you, use his prayer, use his prayer match to cause unprecedented uh, uh, terrible casualty to the kingdom of darkness that have risen against you. 
May God arise for you. May God help you. May God strengthen you. Oh, Jesus. May you never be a victim of the powers of darkness. In the name of Jesus. May God help you to be victorious over every war, over every attack, over everything that has risen against your life. May God see you through. In the name of Jesus. May God help you to have good offense and good defense and good and effective intelligence so that you will be able to fight and outwit the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you begin to pray and ask God to equip you with the Holy Ghost and power. May God equip you tonight and give you all the spiritual skills that you need so that you will be able to outwit the enemy and not be ignorant to the devices of the powers of the devil. Father, have your way tonight. May we never be failures in the spirit. Let our destinies be secured in you. May we never become headless. May we never become casualties in the spirit to reign. Father, strengthen the church. Let the church be strong again. Father, help us never to become victims of spiritual disabilities. Never to become blind or lame. Because of spiritual attacks. Many people go blind because of spiritual attacks. Look at Samson. When his enemies, the Philistines, caught him, the first thing they did was to tie him. They tied his hands, tied his legs, and then they plucked his eyes. Something could not see again. Something was limited. Something was limited. Samson, the strong, became a victim of the forces, of, forces that rose against him. May that never be your portion in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus cover us. May the blood of Jesus strengthen us. May the blood of Jesus make way for us where there's no way. May the power of his blood show us the way out of every power that has risen against us in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, have your way. We cover our dreams with the blood of Jesus. And we are declaring tonight that with the weapon that God has given to us, we shall carry these weapons to enter into the satanic territories, and blow up their tanks, blow up their blood tanks, their blood banks, their enterprise, their satanic covens. We blow them up with our machine guns. We blow them up right now with the power of the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so we call upon our wonderful prayer partner, Archangel Michael, the angel of war. We're inviting him now to come and fight for us. May he carry and lead his entourage of angels of war to go into the spiritual realm, into the spiritual rivers, into the satanic terrains and territories, and they blow up their kingdoms, blow up their evil altars on our behalf and on our account. That even when we sleep, may Angel Michael continue to fight his battle. People that are facing terrific and horrific spiritual attacks, let Angel Michael fight for you. Let him blow off satanic judiciaries that have, set up, that have been set up against you. All their locomotive systems, all their means of transportation, and the means of entering into your lives and families. Let them, the mic, blow them up tonight. Cripple them tonight. Make them up tonight. Set their kingdoms on fire. Let the sea begin to boil. Demonic forces that are dwelling in the sea. Marine powers that are dwelling in the sea. Let the fire of God begin to boil in the sea. Jesus is a consuming fire. Meaning that anywhere the fire is consuming, even in the river, the fire of Jesus continues to to reach. So we are asking him, who is mighty Jesus, the consuming fire, to enter into the rivers where marine spirits, mommy water spirits, water spirits, anywhere they are, anywhere they are hiding, let the power of Jesus begin to set those places on fire, begin to set the rivers on fire in the name of Jesus. The fire of Jesus is not only able to fight and they set the bush on fire. It can also set the water on fire. The water can burn. The water can catch fire. My spirit 
Christ are cutting fire now. We are setting them on fire. Let the fire burn them now. Let the fire destroy them. Let the fire of Jesus, of Christ of Nazareth, people that led to us. All the authors in the Red Sea, all the authors in the Marine Kingdom, let them receive fire. The kingdom of Marine Spirit, the kingdom of the Spirit of the Coast, let them receive only two. Fire! Fire burn them down. Fire burn them down. Fire burn them down. Fire cripple them now. Fire cripple them now. Mata Kataraba. Rekete Bakoto Robo. Ma Sundo Robo Tekete. The power of God is moving now. God is fighting your battle now. People that have covered up to the marine spirit. Now the God of heaven and earth is fighting for you. In the name of Jesus. I command that cover up to be broken now. Cover up with the marine spirit. Let them be broken now. 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 Break power. Jesus, 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 begin to call his name, begin to call his name, the fire is moving now, the fire is moving now, the fire of God is moving now, let him pull down, let him pull down, let him pull down, every place they have taken your nettle, any altar, where your blessings are kept, where your blessings are tied, let that altar cut fire. Let Jesus destroy them now. Every satanic intelligence of your life, let them be crippled now. Let them be messed up now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you, Earth and Jamaica, the mighty angel of war. That even as you are engaging in war now, may this war continue until victory is granted. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus, super mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. St. Michael, the Archangel prayer. Prayer point. Prayer page 17. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God revoke him with humble prayer. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking for the ruin of souls. Amen. Page 18, the Anima Christi prayer. Soul of Christ. One, two, three, go. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you again. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come close to you. That with your sense. I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. And amen. We cover this prayer with the blood of Jesus. We cover the instruments that God has used tonight with the blood of Jesus. We cover all the grounds we have acquired through the course of the prayer blood of Jesus. We cover the weapons of our warfare with the most precious blood of Jesus Christ. We cover every Blessing that God has given to us with the power of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We cover our dreams, blood of Jesus, our good offenses and good defenses and the effective intelligence networks. We cover with the blood of Jesus. Our spiritual reconna reconnaissance, we cover blood of Jesus. We are covering everything that God has given to us, blood of Jesus. Our divine intelligence agencies in heaven, we cover blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The success that, and victory that God has given to us tonight, we are declaring that are all blessings and they will never be taken away from us. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' super mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Whatever place you are, I invite you to lift up your voice over our brother and speak the word of God over him. And ask God to strengthen him, to restore him, fortify him. Make him a spiritual terrorist to continue to terrorize the devil with his prayers in the name of Jesus. Pray that God will continue to wax our brother stronger to make him to grow from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. That God of 
Isaac that in Genesis 26 verse 13 that made Isaac to wax great and strong and made him to get stronger from strength to strength. So may that God be the God of our brother and continue to expand his spiritual territories and horizon, making him to grow stronger, never to go down. In the name of Jesus, pray that any time his voice is lifted, that God will answer by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. We are praying over the instruments that God has used tonight. May there be blessed. May there be blessed. May there be blessed in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord Jesus Christ. Let God bless them. Those who are behind the console, those who are hearing this message all over the world, may God bless each and every one of them. All these and many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, even as we are getting ready for the fasting of today, we're asking you to bless it and uh, use the fasting to open great doors for your children and use the fasting to give us good intelligence, effective intelligence, good offense, and uh, good defense strategies in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. My dear friends, our reading is chapter two of our prayer material. Read everything in chapter two. Don't bother with the prayer points, please. Amen. And our prayer point is, God, give me good offense, good defense, and effective intelligence. You know, because we need these three things, as we have seen in this message of this night, to effectively attack the enemy. So I think God to give us, give us the, the scale for good offense and a good defense and the effective intelligence. If you have these three things, these three components in spiritual war, I tell you, your name is victory. May God bless you. And see you tomorrow, same time, same channel. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Saint of Days. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory. We just want to thank you. I just feel like thanking God for what God has done tonight. Just want to thank him because what he has done tonight is wonderful. There's no way we can go with this night without saying thank you, Jesus. Even as we are covering ourselves, our dreams, our blessings with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be your name. Father, we appreciate what I've done tonight. We'll give you glory. We'll give you glory. We'll give you glory. Yes, Lord, you have done it again. You have done it again. As we honor you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, Jesus. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we worship you. For you are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, Jesus. You are wonderful. I am that I am. My Redeemer is that you are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, in our life. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Oh, Lord. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be your name for all you have done tonight in Jesus' name. Mother Fancy Christ, tomorrow we're going to have our testimonies. So when we after the testimonies tomorrow, testimony time, then we have our prayer in the night. And the same thing on Sunday. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Please don't forget to remind your teenagers in the house, the youths, to come for a youth fellowship tomorrow. Um that's very important, okay? May God bless all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Be grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Please don't forget to pray over your brother and cover him the most precious blood of Jesus Christ twelve times before you sleep and pray for him tomorrow also in Jesus' name. Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.